Hi, and welcome to the Simulation Step Up series. My name is Ramesh Lakshmipati, and I'm a Senior Technical Sales Specialist with DASA System Sorox Corporation. Now, in this presentation, we'll review part two of modeling bolt connectors in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So let's get started. There are several additional options available as part of the bolt connector definition, and one of them is the tight fit option, which essentially creates a rigid connection between the outer faces and the through holes that is selected. It's available across all bolt types and really requires a selection of cylindrical faces of the through holes the bolt shank comes in contact with. Now these through holes must be coaxial. They can be from different parts. They can have a different radius. However, if the through holes are from the same part, the radius values have to be exactly the same. The tight fit option assumption is that the bolt has no radial clearance and plugs the holes. Now keep in mind that the through hole faces that we're talking about are not the threaded faces, but the faces that touch the unthreaded portion of the bolt shank. Now this image here illustrates a little behind the scenes as to what a tight fit and without a tight fit formulation looks like. Now you might be wondering that without a tight fit option, is it really necessary to have the cylindrical holes in the geometry? Well, the way the bolt connector definition, definitions are implemented requires a selection of circular edges as you have seen so far for the bolt head and nut. So if you want to get away with it, you have to make sure that you can you create that circular edge by using a split line operation on the desired uh, phase where the bolt head uh, sits or where the nut might actually be in contact with. Finally, the rigid connections shown here in the picture tends to overly stiffen the bolted joint. So really there isn't a reason to use the tight fit option unless it's absolutely necessary. A couple of general assumptions that we make uh, and that applies to all the bolt connector techniques is the fact that the bolt head and washer contact phase, the nut contact phase are assumed to always remain in touch or in contact with the bolted components, meaning there is sufficient preload that results in an infinite friction and thus there will be no sliding between the bolt head and the nut and the respective components. If you end up using a tight fit option, the bolt shank is rigidly tied to the through holes there is no clearance or elasticity in this in the bolt uh, in the scenario, which which prevents any kind of you know sliding or deformation under shear loading. Otherwise, the bolt shank does not interact with the through holes in any way. So, bottom line is that if the bending of the bolt is expected to contact the inside of the holes, and that bending contact may be significant in your uh, interpretation of the results, you may actually want to switch over to physically modeling a simplified solid bolt and take that into account for simulation. In setting up a bolt, you do need to define a material of the bolt. The default material selected is AISI304. However, you can always choose to define your own custom material, which is essentially uh, specifying a Young's modulus, a Poisson's ratio, and coefficient of thermal expansion or you can always select a material directly from the simulation library. Now keep in mind that the library material copies the required properties, but it does not actually link the bolt back to the material library. So what that means is any changes to the properties of the material in the material library will not reflect in the existing bolt definition. So in, the, in these case scenarios where you end up changing the material properties in the library, you must reselect the material of the bolt one more time. Finally, there's also an option to include the mass of the bolt. So in scenarios where the weight of the bolt might be significant or if you're actually including the bolt in a frequency analysis, uh, you can always account for the mass of the bolt in those situations. All right, one of the 
powerful options uh, as part of the pole connector definition is the strength data specification. The strength data option helps to determine if the bolt can safely carry the applied load loads or is it going to fail. Now the methodology used in SOLIDWORKS simulation to assess the bolt safety is actually taken from the NASA document MSTS08307. Now you can always input a known tensile area or let the program calculate it based on the bolt shank, diameter and thread pitch. The bolt strength can be used to define or equal to yield strength if the bolt material is selected from the library. This is used for uh, safety fact factor calculations. You can also input a desired factor safety value to ensure the bolt is fail safe. So what the program does internally behind the scenes is it calculates the axial bending and shear loads during the analysis comes up with the axial load ratio, bending load ratio, and shear load ratio, which is ultimately used to calculate the uh, working factor safety in the bolt. So the calculated factor safety value is then compared to the desired factor safety to determine the pass or no pass state of the, of the bolt. What's powerful is that a bolt check plot, as you can see here, is can, can, can be ac accessed to visually see and get feedback on what bolts have failed, what bolts have actually passed the factor safety calculations. Now, a more detailed description of the exact calculations for the factor safety can actually be found in the online help in solid simulation or you can always reference the NASA document outlined in the slide. A great aspect of bolt connectors is the ability to apply preload. Preload is typically defined as axial load through the bolt causing the two components to be compressed together. You can define that axial preload directly by inputting a force that puts an initial tension inside of the bolt or you can use the torque option inside of the bolt connector application. The torque option with the corresponding friction coefficient will calculate an axial preload based on standard calculations as shown here. Now these calculations can be found in many references, some of which are listed at the end of the presentation. Using the equations shown, the axial force is calculated, K is the torque coefficient or the friction coefficient defined in the interface and these calculations have been used as standard means of estimating the preload as best as we can, knowing that there are a lot of things that can come into play that can cause the preload calculations to be off. Bottom line is that these are just estimates and ballpark numbers when it comes to number crunching for preloads. A little bit about the torque coefficient. K involves a calculation using diameters, thread angles, which are lead angles, friction between the threads, and a number of different aspects of the fastener itself. Friction is a big part of the calculation of K. Now, it is going to be really vary in real-world applications greatly, and at times it can be unpredictable. So our recommendation is to stick with some initial well-published well-documented K values as shown here, and then adjust those values based on testing. If you don't have any better information on your designs, choose K as 0.2, and that's usually recommended, and don't deviate from this value unless you have a better knowledge of what's happening inside of the bolt. Some more thoughts on preloading of the bolts. There are a number of torque components that come into play when a bolt is preloaded. There's a running torque which accounts for general friction between the bolt and its threaded cobalt that is going to add a component of torque and that running torque must be subtracted from the preload torque. The number of things that can actually happen as shown here and which can actually cause the friction or the apparent friction to be smaller or larger than you would expect. So keep those in mind when you're doing your calculations. Now up to about 85% of the measured torque 
when you are preloading a poll can be attributed to losses that don't create axial preload, such as things like underhead friction, thread deformation, and other things in correlation to a control test is ideal. There are published error levels, and these are just ways to get a feel of how accurate or how confident you can be in your preload calculations. Essentially, if the operative feel is your best guess at consistent preloading, you're looking at plus or minus 35% on your axial preload calculations. And going all the way down to using a strain gauge on your bold or ultrasonics to measure stress and tension, you can come up with a more accurate preload calculation. Now, typically a torque wrench is most commonly used way of torquing a bolt, and that's still expected to give you a plus or minus 25% of your preload. So remember, your preload calculations are really ballpark, and it's a good idea to experiment inside your simulation model to determine whether a plus 25% or a minus 25% preload on the bolts is going to have an impact on the decisions you might make from the results calculated. So, in summary, take the time to understand how sensitive your responses are to the preload you're putting in your system before running off and making authoritative design decisions based on this data. One of the advanced options in a bolt connector definition is to be able to use the bolt to connect more than two parts that have a coaxial cylindrical through holes. For example, in the image shown, there's a compression gasket that's labeled the middle part and that's sandwiched between the flange plates, which are in turn bolted together. Using the bolt series checkbox option, you can select the through hole face of the middle part, and this will result in connecting that middle part to the bolt connector. Now, the allowable misalignment of the through holes is roughly about 10% of the smallest radius. So if you think about it, this behaves much like a tight fit option for that middle part. So behind the scenes, the program ends up creating rigid bars, which are shown in light blue, to connect the bolt shank to the nodes of the cylindrical face of the middle plate, shown in red. The consequence is that the cylindrical face of that middle part is then going to be rigid, which means it's not going to compress and hence will not show any deformation. Another advanced option that can be taken advantage of is the symmetrical bolt option. Oftentimes, you can analyze either one quarter or one half geometry of your part or assembly for simulation purposes. This reduces meshing and simulation solve, solve times. The good news is, if the planes of symmetry cut through the actual bolts as well, then the symmetrical bolt option can be used in the bolt connector definition. A couple of things to keep in mind are that the input preload value should be the total preload of the full bolt divided by the number of symmetry planes used. Similarly, when the program reports the bolt force results, the load would be either one half or one quarter of the total force on the bolt. One last thing is that if the strength data is used along with the symmetry option, the program again scales automatically the tensile stress area based on the symmetry type chosen. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, some, some really cool automation that exists in SOLIDWORKS simulation with respect to bolt connectors. There are a lot of automation tools like the one I'm going to talk about that really leverages smart intelligent data from SOLIDWORKS to save us a lot of time, especially when you are dealing with a ton of bolt connections in your assembly. For example, a whole series feature in SOLIDWORKS is used to create the holes on the flange faces as shown. Now, when you define a bolt connector in SOLIDWORKS simulation, using one of those holes and click OK, you will be prompted with this message. Do you want to add bolt connectors to all the holes in the whole series? And upon clicking yes on the message, SOLIDWORKS simulation propagates that bolt definition to all the holes on the flange faces. That's pretty neat and really a huge time saver. So within seconds, you have multiple bolt connectors defined. This again, is you leveraging the integration benefits and uh, of working inside one single environment. 
Another great automation tool is the ability to automatically convert toolbox fasteners to bolt connectors in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Now what, what happens here is that the location, the type of bolt, material, strength data, and the preload values are automatically mapped from the fastener definition in SOLIDWORKS to the corresponding bolt connector in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So to do this, all this requires is to check the box as shown here, convert toolbox fasteners to bolt connectors. And the program takes over and does the rest for us. Let's take a look at this video of how this automation actually works. In this piping assembly, there are about 40 fasteners that need to be treated as bolt connectors in SOLIDWORKS simulation. All that is need all, all that needs to be done is to check the box while creating the simulation setup. So here I'm creating a simulation static analysis and checking the box to convert the toolbox fasteners to bolted connectors. In less than about 10 seconds, the program is able to map and create these connections, resulting in huge time savings versus having to create these manually in SOLIDWORKS simulation. As you can see, all the required fields or inputs for the bolt connector are pre-populated as this information is automatically derived from the geometry as well as the toolbox data. Now, one of the things here about this automatic mapping of toolbox data is the tensile stress area is actually calculated in accordance to the ISO ANSI bold threads formula as shown. Now you can find this information in the online help of SOLIDWORKS simulation. So the two key inputs that are actually taken from the toolbox library for that particular bolt connection is the pitch and the diameter values. All right, that concludes this presentation. You can watch this presentation as well as several other presentations as part of the Simulation Step Up series on the Simulation YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks and have a great day.